I... Oh, wow. Freddy, you all right there, pal? Making video games is hard. It takes a lot of time, money okay. and skill to create a good experience. And as a guy who spent a lot of time creating simple games in Unity, I think I have enough experience to talk about a massive game in a popular franchise that took a big team at least two years you to complete. Two year. Let's start by understanding how to create a game. The first step would be planning, or as I like to call it... Money and explosives. <laughs> I've got an idea! That's the part where you outline the basic concept of the game, its gameplay and all that stuff. Then we move on to production where you develop the game. After that you usually test the game, fix bugs, get yeah, feedback man. and all that. And then you finally release the game. So, pop quiz time, what part of the development was skipped or overlooked by the developers of Security Breach? And that is correct! This game was not playtested. And what could possibly go wrong if you don't test the game before release? Um, well... Frame rate drops. Maybe that ray tracing was a little too much. Animatronic standing still, player clipping through walls. Freddy clipping through walls, everyone clipping through walls, enemies being blind. Okay, now we've reached the point of negotiation. Enemies seeing through walls. So the door doesn't door. Hitboxes being suboptimal. Apparently I missed the blue button by about one pixel. And Gmod physics. But I'm not done yet! Voice lines being skipped if you play with zero volume. Lines over and over and decide to lower your voice volume all the way down, you might notice that cutscenes completely break down. Freddy. Just. You alright? Come on, Freddy. Freddy! Come on! Oh! G mode physics again. Getting killed by no one. What happened? No, Heavenly arcade cabinets. What? And Freddy. And I'm gonna shove a beak inside of you, and you are going to be able to talk better. You. So, how did this happen? Why did Security Breach release in such a bad state? Well, I have some theories about that. But they are just that theories. Or should I say, game theories? Music Man! Number one, experience. From what I saw on the developer's site, they only made VR games before Security Breach and a random mobile game. But everyone should start somewhere, I guess. In VR games, your movement is usually restricted to a small area, especially in FNAF Help Wanted, a previous game from this developer, that basically ported classic FNAF games to VR. And as you may have heard, Classic FNAF games usually are not about moving around, so maybe making a game where player can roam almost freely around a huge building without prior experience caused some of the bugs. Number 2. PlayStation 5 On September 16, 2020, a teaser trailer for the game was launched during the PlayStation 5 showcase event, revealing new rooms along with the new main lobby. I think all of you know that PlayStation 5 is known for its fast load times. And you know what happens when you enter a new location in Security Breach? I have to go through the laundry again, I would have lost my mind. I only had a little... What? Oh! It loads a huge chunk of the Pizzaplex without a loading screen. So maybe, just maybe, Sony forced the developers to remove loading screens so the game would showcase the power of PlayStation 5. But from what I found, some people report that the PS5 version is also not optimized. Number three, Scott Cawthon. Most of you have probably heard about it already, but I'll do a quick recap just in case. In June 2021, Scott got into some hot water because of his questionable financial decisions. After people found out where Scott sent his money, he decided to leave the FNAF series to focus on other aspects of his life. This announcement no doubt put some pressure on Steelpool, as they now were responsible for making a game without its creator. And my guess is that this situation happened during the testing phase of the development, cause 
in half a year security breach was already released. So this must have had an effect on Steel Wolf's efforts at fixing the game. Number 4 A lot of effort was put into marketing the game. The PlayStation Showcase, Funko figurines, animatics... And on release we got... this. So maybe we just expected too much and after realizing the game didn't live up to our expectations, we started to notice even more security breaches in the game. In the end, I still think that security breach is a great enough experience. We got a lot of speedrunners interested in the game because of the bugs. MadPad got enough lore for at least 10 more videos. Steelwool promises to fix the game as fast as possible. And my hope is that it will not take up 50 gigabytes on my hard drive. Number 5. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Thank you for watching and have a good one. Baba Bowie.